Hello and welcome to This Date in History, also known as TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by actual historians, but mainly things that we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources, of course, of this information come from the Smart Device application, Today in History, What Happened Today in History? Historical, Historical calendar. calendar. And on this day dot com. Hey Scott, that was Sorry. a good thing. You, you, I, I can hear you both. You did it in unison. That, that was perfect. Like we keep doing, we've done that a couple times already. That's it's great. You're you're inadvertently like you know synchronizing, and that actually like adds a little bit to the mystique of the show. It's like ooh, we have an echoey effect going on. You know, getting ooh. fancy. Ooh. Anyway, for links to those sources, the music, and anything else potentially interesting, you can check the underbar in the description below. Anyway. I am A.O. Xander. I am who is Wallace? <gasps> Scott. Um, I am Scott. Yep, and... Troublemaker. Troublemaker, yes. Today is Freya's Day, also known as Friday. It is September 9th, 2022. Two days away from a certain big event. So. Never forgetty. Never forgetty. Don't get upset. A certain big event. Yes. Indeed. Well, who wants to start us off today in the year 701? Oh, well. All right. That was 701. St. Sergius. Uh, no, St. Sergius I reigned as Catholic Pope ends. Ah. Hmm. Ooh. Two, what? 1,000. The Battle of Silver. 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 Baltic Sea. King Olaf on board the Long Serpent, defeated in one of the greatest naval battles of the Viking Age, he leaps to his death aboard. Overboard. So oh, overboard. So like he was just like I'm a Viking, ah! and then he dies. You know. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. And uh, 1379, the Treaty of Newburgh splitting the Austrian. Hasburg lands between the Hasburg Dukes Albert III and Leopold III. Ah. All right, so we're gonna go in a clockwise motion. So Sohan went first, then me, then Scott, then Alice. If she does switch, is that cool, everybody? Yep. Yeah. That sounds, right. that sounds closer to me. Okay. I mean, that sounds, that sounds good. Sorry. Yep. Moving on up into 1513, we have the Battle of Flodden. English forces defeated the Scots near Branston in Northumberland and killed King James the Fourth uh, of Scotland. Oh man, not good for Scotty boy over here. Uh, the last monarch in Great Britain to be killed in battle. Wow, look at that. Wow. Well, well, that's interesting. They don't want to play battle anymore. Yeah, no, they don't. They sit sit on their golden thrones and tell people to live within their means. Pretty you funny. do this. You go here. I'll go home. Yeah, I know. Kind of right? like in that, what was that movie? Um, Hung Pao, Enter the Fist. Oh yeah. You I, go here. I go home. I haven't seen that movie in a while. So. You know, Why? for this next one, was uh, Mary Queen of Scots made of porcelain or something? Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just like layers and layers of makeup. Because instead of bathing, they actually like uh, back in the days, like they thought bathing actually took oils and stuff out of your skin, and, and it was unhealthy. They thought bathing was unhealthy, so they actually just kept put more, more and more makeup on and everything, and like. One of the queens, like, I don't I don't remember who it was, but I think it was Queen Elizabeth I, I don't know. But upon her death, she had, like, I don't know, 25 pounds of makeup on her face. Like, it was crazy. They just kept adding, you know? Must have smelled lovely. Yeah. Huh? Dude, that's disgusting. Yeah, it is. It really is. But, uh, speaking of porcelain people, 1543, Mary Stuart, at nine months old, was crowned Queen of Scots in the central Scottish town of Stirling. Bow down to your king, uh, to your queen, Scott. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Someone must have died. If I had one, yes. <laughs> and then in 1561, con Conference of Poissy religious theolo theologians gathered by Catherine de Medici. What is a Conference of Poissy, though? Let's see here. Because this is a religious gathering of sorts. Uh, the Colloquy at Poissy was a religious conference which took place in Poissy, France in 1561. Its object was to effect a reconciliation between the Catholics and Protestants, or the Huguenots, of France. So it was a unification attempt, so that's pretty cool. Damn. Yeah. 
Mr. Scott. Right. If you do so wish, I see a cool one here in 1753. Okay. 1753, the first steam engine arrives in North American colonies. Dang. That's... Is that with people? Is that people or goods? Uh, goods. well, no, it's first steam engine, so like you know, to to be used for like whatever oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, no, this is not like this is not like a train or anything. This is actually like the actual engine for like a facility or something. Oh. Yeah. A steam engine. Yeah. Uh, oh well. Um, hmm. 1830 is, uh, well, 1830 is interesting, you know, if you want. Is it? Sure. 1830, Charles Durant, first U.S. aeronaut, flies a balloon from Castle Garden, New York City, to Perth Amboy, New Jersey, a distance of about 25 miles, covered in three hours. Jesus. Hey. It's a distance. Distance. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. A distance. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> But hey, uh, I, I'm like I'm sorry. Like I just saw 1817. If you want, that's interesting too. That's really cool. If you want, hey, because it has your name. Well, no. Uh, well, maybe, but like, that, well, no. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I love your rebuttal. Maybe. 1817. Alexander Twilight, probably first African American to graduate from a U.S. college, receives a bachelor's degree at Middlebury College. Wow, the first one ever. Yeah. That's something. That's cool. Yeah. It first is, uh, graduate of a college, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's intriguing. Yeah. Congratulations. You're the first to graduate from a university. Yeah, and hopefully he didn't go into slavery after that or something. Well, that's that's a really dark uh, thought, man, but though. yeah. Well, before who knows? He graduate from that. What I mean, you got to find something to do, and who knows how that even happens? I got to pay off the student loan somehow, right? You know. Well, <laughs> the only reason I said that is because it still existed. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. 1817. The the, uh, the Civil War didn't even start until 1860. Like. One, something like that. So this is what's way back then. So yeah, you know, you do have a, some merit with that. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Not yeah. to be dark. That was kind yeah, of no, you no, know, like yeah, no, like I, I wasn't knocking you. It's just like holy crap, you know, like that is a possibility. He might have been, you know, something might have happened. Oh, well, I don't know. But, I wouldn't know. I'm speculating here. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, if Miss Alice wants to take a turn, it's up to her. You know, um. Is this a historic publication? Yeah, 1836, yes. Well, actually, I want to do 1830 real quick, because that one we, looks kind of cool. We already did that. Scott read that oh, before. Damn it, Scott. Yeah. God damn it. Damn you, Scott. All right, fine. Well, though, I got an 1836. We have a Ralph Waldo Emerson publishes his influential, influential essay, Nature, in the U.S. outlining his beliefs in transcendentism. Transcendentalism. Transcendentalism. Yeah. Transcendentalism. So uh, it's uh, you know, it's his uh, riffle frazzle wear. Yeah. Uh, transcend transcendentalism uh, is an yes. idealistic philosophical, uh, uh, philo philosophical and social movement which developed in New England around 1836 in re reaction to rationalism, influenced by romanticism. <laughs> Platonism and Kantian philosophy, it taught that divinity pervades all nature and humanity, and its members held progressive views on feminism and communal living. Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau were central figures. Blah, 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 blah. Henry David Thoreau were central figures. Dang. Okay. That's pretty cool. Emerson, yeah. Yeah. And I have a wiki uh, here for the underpart. So. Guys, I'm gonna uh, have. To, I'm just gonna do one right is now. That, is that the same Emerson's essays like Ralph Waldo? Like I don't know if that's the same or not. <coughs> Pardon me. I think it is. I think it is. No. Oh. This is something by Emerson right here. Ah, uh, I can't really read it that well. Can you read it for? Oh, yeah. Uh, 
It's, it is easy in the world to live after the world's opinion. It is easy in solitude to live after our own. But the great man is he who is the, who in the midst of the crowd keeps with perfect sweetness and the independent of solitude. Emerson, self-reliance. Yes. That is really I good. I hope that's the same guy. I mean, I don't know. Uh, well. Speaking what? of my self-reliance, there's actually, like, this totally off subject. There's a guy on YouTube who does, like, uh, Living Out Grid called My Self-Reliance. It's actually pretty interesting if anyone ever wants to uh, check that out. I've seen a couple off the grid videos and everything. Okay, um, I, can, I can do the next one here. Uh, I thought I had a cost. I thought I had a, okay. a must of cost, but we have an 1839. We have an English scientist and astronomer, John Herschel, takes first glass plate photograph. Ooh. Holy buckets. Nice. Ooh, and here nice. we are utilizing cameras. You know, like this is the evolution, you know, then and now, you know, like. That's cool. First glass plate photograph. Wow. I don't know. How about 1850? The, uh, the blue one. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, well, Alice is muted again, so I think we need to move on to Sohan here. Okay. If you want, there's uh, 1850, the blue one there. Uh, 1841, Tom Pyre beats Doris. McChester in 101 rounds at the Caldwell Landon, New York to become first American heavyweight boxing champion. Nice. Boxing. You know? That's cool. Yeah, somebody, uh, I was in a clown server yesterday in the Killer Clowns from Outer Space Discord. And, uh, it's like, like, there was this whole uh, conversation going on about, like, you know, oh, you can't defeat Mike Tyson in the ring. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can. And he's like, oh, how are you going to do that? I'm like, I'll just bite his ear off. You know, I was like, oh, you can't box Mike Tyson. I'm like, yeah, I can. I'll put him in a giant box with some of those packing peanuts, send him to Albuquerque via UPS. You know, I'm not fighting him, but I'm boxing him, you know. <laughs> you can just talk him. To, you can knock him out by talking. Dang, is that a subtle hint saying I talk too much? Am I alice No, because he's got that list of oh. thing and you don't know. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You guys were in one of my newfound lists. Um, it's not my fault that, like, uh, well, I guess my what? Not my fault. What? I, I, we weren't even talking I, about I, your lisp. <laughs> Dude, I heard a lispy thing and I heard Alice and lispy. So no, like, we were talking about oh. Michael Tyson. <laughs> oh, oh, shit snacks. We were talking about Mike Tyson and boxing him and everything, and then, well, and then well, he was then, like, no, I can just out talk him. So I'm just like, oh, am I Alicing too much? Is this a subtle hint? You know? Oh, God. Oh, that's okay, so I'm just going to go outside and play hide and go fuck myself now. <laughs> all right, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll, I'll be back <laughs> in, in like three minutes. All right. Uh, Mr. Sowen, the two 1850s are pretty cool, actually, if you want those. Yeah, please. You there? I'll do one of them. Okay. Calif 1850, California is admitted as the 31st state of the union ah nice go well not go but california that's where i'm at weren't we watching stuff about mexico as they kind of made their way into california i don't know what time that was but like are we talking about the mexican-american war or yeah i guess so. it's <laughs> probably not related but well i mean california used to be part of mexico you actually used to like go all the way up until like i think like Oregon or Washington, like Mexico was huge. We effectively cut them in half. So yeah. It also like uh, Mexico also encumbered uh, like New Mexico and Arizona too, I believe. Oh well, yeah, and, like the entire and part, and part of Texas. Well, all of Texas, like the entire Pacific Southwest. Well, like... yeah, yeah, I suppose you're right there. Cause, yeah, well, Texas is like fuck you. We don't want to be part of you. You know, Texas emerged because, like, uh, they had, like, uh, Mexico had an open border thing, and they allowed, you know, U.S. people to come in and, you know, make homesteads, you know, and get taxed and all that stuff, and eventually there was enough of them being like, hey, we want independence, and Mexico's like, no, you know, you're here, you know, this is us, and then all this stuff happened, you know, they got U.S. backing, and then, and then there was a war, and then the Alamo, and then there's a whole video explaining the whole thing, um, and then, like, Maybe uh, that would be I'm oh, sorry to interrupt. I was gonna say maybe that'd be a good conversation to have on the Jabberwocky. The comings yes. of Texas. I said coming. 
Well, like uh, Texas, if you ever if you ever heard know of the uh, the theme park Six Flags, the first one was called Six Flags over Texas, and that's because Texas has had six different nations, including itself, governing it. It used to be Mexico uh, itself, the United States, Spain, not in that order. Um, but yeah, uh, it used to be part of Spain, well, Mexico, Spain, you know, like so, like. But yeah, no, like uh, there are six different, and I think Texas has been in there twice. Um, so, but six different flags, at least. So, six flags. Of the amusement park called Six Flags? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. It's called Six Flags over Texas. That was the first Six Flags, because there have been six different flags over that country, as far as governance. Is the first Six Flags in Arlington, Texas? I, the, no, Arlington? Oh, yeah. 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 For a second, I thought you said Northern Arlen. Island. I'm like, Arlen doesn't exist. <laughs> no, it's Arlington. Uh, well, let's see. Let me type in here. Uh, uh, the history of Mexico and Texas. Here we go. All right. Uh, let's uh, move it all along here. Mr. Soen, you have one more. I would I would honestly like it if you take this second 1850, but it's your turn, your choice. Speaking of, you know, Mexico and everything, like, right off right off the conversation's alley right there, dude. Hi. 1850 territories of New Mexico and Utah created. Yeah. At 1862, Robert E. Lee splits his army and sends Jackson to capture Harper's Ferry. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. Like, um, I, I think it turned out to be a massive disaster because he split his forces. You know, he he uh, he overestimated himself or something. I don't know. Harper's Ferry, like uh, that has to be. Uh, like a, oh yeah, now it's a National Historic Park. But I'll oh, be back. All right. Yeah, where is it? Uh, Harper's Ferry. It is in Virginia. It's in West Virginia. It's a town actually oh, okay. in West Virginia. So, well, there's a there's a there's a historic park there, but it's also a town. So, hmm. yeah. Uh, Harper's Ferry is a town in West Virginia. Pass wind through Harper's Ferry National Historic Park, which has 19th century buildings, a Civil War Museum, and John Brown's Fort, a key site in an 1859 abolitionist raid. The location where the Potomac and Shenandoah Rivers meet, known as The Point, offers views of Maryland and Virginia. The Appalachian Trail Visitor Center has exhibits on the long-distant hiking trail. Well, that's cool. I have a lot of people uh, that have been coming through from the uh, Appalachian Trail uh, hike that people do uh, in the last couple months. Oh, actually. nice. Yeah, like my... Uh, my... Like, the Appalachian Trail comes right through uh, my town that I live in, so... That's cool. Like, I had a friend who was uh, planning on doing that. He had a friend who did it um, at one point. Like, you know, all the way from the south to the north. Like, the whole thing. Took him several months. So, Are we boring yeah, you, Mr. Okay. Scott? Huh? Are no. we boring you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Up late last night. Yeah, same here. I'm tired, too. Anyway, moving on up into 1880s. I don't really, like, feel tired. I'm just yawning tired. I don't know. But... Yeah. Yeah. Whose turn? Uh, I believe it's my turn now. We have 1880. Rutherford B. Hayes visited San Francisco. He was the 19th U.S. president, so he visited San Fran. Okay. So uh, that's cool. This uh, next one's pretty cool. Uh, oh, the, uh, the the highlighted one or the non-highlighted? Yeah, 1888. Yeah. Yeah, 1888. Easter Island thatch Papa Nui of the uh, yeah the Rapa Nui in the Pacific it was annexed by Chile. Oh yeah, that's right. The yeah, Easter Island. They, they walked those statues into place. That's how they describe it. They had them on ropes and they like mm -hmm. went like this and yeah. got them into place. It's pretty. It's a pretty cool story about how Easter Island was formed. Easter Island was amazing, and like th their main downfall was just overpopulation. Like you know, like, like they used to have just like a luscious forest on that island, and then the people just kept cutting down trees, and then like, you know things weren't growing back fast enough, and then they thought that the gods were mad. So you know, as tribute, they started building all of these moai, um, you know, and then it just nothing happened, and eventually, and it's crazy. Like you know, they've been there for like you know since forever, and there's there's no understanding of how they got there. Easter Island is way the fuck out in the ocean. Like how did they get out there? They didn't have ships back then. Like, the only feasible option is that they actually literally canoed, like, thousands of miles out to just random, like, you know, it's, it's nuts, dude. Absolutely nuts how they got out there. No idea. Yep. So. 
Uh, but let's see here. Uh, 1892, E.E. E. Barnard at Lick discovered uh, Amalthea, the fifth moon of Jupiter. Well, that's interesting. And then, uh, let's see here. Uh, 1892, Manifesto of the Queensland Labor Party to the people of Queensland issued detailing... Well, was issued detailing grievances of working class towards ruling class. Pivotal document in Australian labor and political history. Well, that's very relevant. So... Dang. I believe it's now Scott's turn. 1899, French Captain Alfred Dreyfus sentenced on unjust grounds. Yeah, uh, the whole Dreyfus affair, because he was Jewish, there was a whole thing going on about it. He was nearly executed for treason. Um, actually, I think he was executed for treason. Uh, no, he was not executed for treason. So, yeah, he was found innocent. So, okay. But he almost... So, you know, not good. But yeah, hold that. Uh, oh, 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 hang on, guys. Uh, let me check it out. The, the Dreyfus Affair. Um, it was a political scandal that divided the French Third Republic from 1894 until its resolution in 1906. So for 12 years, it was like an ongoing thing. Uh, like really political instability, wibbly-wobbly stuff, you know? Like... I'm going to add the link to this wiki in the other Wibbly book. wobbly? Yeah, wibbly wobbly, tiny and whiny stuff, you know. So, as it's said by the doctor. Anyway. Nice. Yep. Uh, uh, I'll just, I guess, do 1908. Orville Wright makes first one hour airplane flight for Fort Myer, Virginia. That's cool. In the air for an hour. Hmm. And uh, why don't you take another one here in 1904, the black one, or the black, the black uh, numbered 1904? Yeah, I was going to. In 1904, mounted police first used in New York City. Dang. Oh. Yeah, they could probably out, you know, be almost as fast as cars back then. Yeah. Cause that's like that's like Model A time. Yeah, yeah, that's when like you know the whole like, uh, not the crankshaft, but like the the spinner starter or whatever you call it I, I don't pretty know. much but why don't you take another Thanks, one so, here yeah. the blue 1904 that is interesting to me personally and I know you would really like it too okay Boston Herald again refers to New York baseball club as Yankees when it reports Yankees take two Yankee not Yankee name not official till 1913 so that's interesting <laughs> they were being called something that they weren't even in Maybe that's in why Boston, they're called the Boston. The Boston Herald of all things. Yeah, the Boston, you know. Yep. Anyway, uh, Miss Alice might be uh, busy. Uh, Sohan, are you there? He's muted. Okay. I was giving him a, a chance to say something, but uh, then I guess I'll just uh, go up under 1909. Jack Johnson retained his heavyweight boxing title when he fought Al Kaufman to a no decision in 10 rounds at uh, Kauf Ross Arena, San Francisco, California. Dang. So, no uh, no decision. So, just uh, throw, in the, throw in the towel type of thing. Nobody wins, nobody loses. But then, just uh, two years later, in 1911, the first European post delivered by air, specifically from Henson to Windsor in England. So, air delivery, air mail, 1911. Can you imagine that? Hmm. And then here's another one. Just one year later, you know, going, you know, speaking of uh, Orville Wright here, uh, from 1908 into 1911, or 1912, uh, Jay Verdrines became the first to fly over 100 miles per hour. At 107 miles per hour, which is 172 kilometers per hour. So the first person to go over 100. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, not too fast to compare to today's standards, considering, you know, a car can easily do 100, but... Well, yeah. Well, that's think probably about... just fast enough to stay in the air. Yeah, well, 100 miles per hour on any of today's planes just won't cut it, because it's just too heavy. You won't get the lift with that slow speed, you know? Yeah. But uh, speaking of aircraft, we seem to be stuck in the air right now here. Uh, Mr. Scott, if you want to take this 1913, that's interesting. Russian pilot one? Yeah. Okay, Russian pilot Peter Yoder Nesterov becomes the first pilot to fly a loop doing so in his Newport the fourth monoplane. He is arrested for 10 days for endangering government property. Oh my yeah. god. 
So a loop. So that's it was like, worth it. That's like doing like a loop to loop, like a roller coaster, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Dude, a lot of like aircraft things are like happen on this day. That's wild, man. You it know? is, yeah. Like you know, the first uh, hour long flight, the first flight, you know, hundred over a hundred miles per hour, the first loop, the first air delivery in Europe at least. You know, wow, like holy crap, man. Mm. That's a lot of stuff happening on that date. Not the same year, mind you, but still. Oh well, 1914. That's uh, that's interesting right there. The fully mechanized unit one. Yeah. 1914, first fully mechanized unit in the British Army created. The Canadian Automobile Machine Gun Brigade for World War One. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, they literally probably just... changed the war right there. Yeah, no, like the uh, World War One was the first modern war. Um, you know, they brought in, you know, like, uh, vehicles, and actually, uh, oh, dude, look at this. Dude, like, if you're watching my stream, if I, do I even have it on my, uh, yeah, I have my stream up. Um, dude, like, it, it just looks like a giant, like, box, it looks like a smaller version of Germany's, like, giant box tank thing, but with wheels instead of tracks, and, like, they just have machine guns on the top, like, that's, that is wild, What are those man. called, they like, put them together, the, uh... They put those panels together. And they didn't weld it. It's uh, I can't remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that, that's they made. That's they. They uh, blah 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 blah. They. Um, that's how they made ships. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't remember the word uh, for whatever. I'm trying reason. to remember. Um, like studs or something. That's not right. Um, hold on a second. How uh, old metal ships were made? Let's see here. Um, um, uh, uh, man, why can't I think of this? I know. I'm racking my brain here, you know, like, uh, what was it called? Um, man, well, we'll get to it, maybe eventually. Anyway, Scott, uh, you have, uh, what's up? Yeah, I'm thinking, I know, it's uh, annoying. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like right on the tip of my tongue, you know, like... Hold on a second. Um, what is the pr process of building an old ship? Uh, ancient shipbuilding techniques? No. That's too old. Yeah. Uh, um, building 1900s era ship. Uh, how do they build old ships? Um, rivets, rivets. There you I go. Just thought Got it. it. Yeah. Rivets. Riveted. Yeah. Wow, that took a oh, that took a while. Yeah. All no, right. Yeah. 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 Good call. Yeah, that's right. They, you know, because this was before welding and before they knew all that. Like they literally just like, hey, it's a land boat. Just slap some steel on the car, rivet it there, and that's armor. You know, like. Yeah. Really, you know. Yeah. Everything has to start somewhere, you know. They didn't just come out of the gate knowing how to make a perfect armored vehicle, so mm -hmm. that's cool. We well, have one more. Uh, we can. 1915 go. is interesting, although it contains a word that's uh, mildly uh, inappropriate, but um, it's the first something, you know. So I think that's cool, but uh, as always, up to you. Where? What did I miss in history? Uh, well, uh, we Scott and I like spent the past minute trying to figure out what what the word riveting, um, because riveting? We're, yeah, well, we were looking at uh, the uh, the Canadian car because uh, let's see here, what was this? Um, Ninety first fourteen, the first fully mechanized unit in the British Army was created, as Scott read. The Canadian automobile Canadian, so not even British, but Canadian automobile machine gun brigade during the First World War. And I was looking at these. And riveting. Because yeah. I was going to say, isn't riveting is like what you put into, like, you put a rivet into, like, some steel to, like, pull yeah. it together? Yeah, well, no, that's what we were talking about. Like, they literally just took, like, you know, like, like, uh, like a, an automobile and then riveted metal plates to it and then strapped a couple oh, machine so guns to the top. And that was, you know, a wartime automobile machine, you know? So that is, so the first armored vehicle. The first armored vehicle brigade. So oh, brigade? The Holy first shit, in the world. The first armored vehicle brigade. Like right here, uh, where'd it go? Yeah, the first fully mechanized unit in the British Army created. So at least for British. 
So the first fully mechanized unit. So as Scott was saying, like, you know, it was a, a, a very pivotal point, you know, in world history, you know, going from, you know, horse and buggy to, you know, motor. Like, you know, getting actually mechanized. Not just mobile, but mech. And like, you know, oh, God. Yeah. Holy shit, that tastes good. Well, what are you eating? Sorry. I'm not eating anything. I just opened, um, I'm going to buy here. Um, I just opened a, uh, a ghost sour watermelon warheads energy drink. Oh, wow. It tastes fucking delicious. I bet it does. Yeah, maybe maybe they can sponsor hey. our show. Oh, yeah, dude, Jack, yeah, Jack, Jack Johnson. Yeah, sponsor our show. All of us, because we're all just exercising. Hey, don't go past Jack Johnson already? Jack Johnson? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 1909. Uh, 1909? Uh, yeah. To China? <laughs> I'm not we're saying going Johnson. Back. We're going back here. Yeah. Anyway, Scott, uh, you have one more article, so let's get back on track here. Um, just pick something. You know, have fun. Go for it. All right. Um, just do 1940, I guess. Okay. 1940 U.S. National Championship Men's Tennis. Force Hills, New York, David McNeil beats fellow American Bobby Riggs 4-6, 68-68. 6 to 3, 6 to 3 and 7 to 5 for a second major single title. Oh, it's tennis, but yeah. It's part of the highlighted. Yep. Oh, Miss Alice, uh, I saw you pop on the screen for a second. Are you still there? I guess not. Um, nope. So head. Your turn. No, I am. I was just uh, ringing myself up for my energy drink. Ah, uh, okay. As she cracks it open, I heard that. Yeah, I cracked it open. I actually had a can it with an open can, but that's all right. Oh, wow. Ooh. I cracked it up and open, too. Huh. Oh, yeah. Which one? Uh, 1940, U.S. Open Women's Tennis? Yeah, I'm skipping it. Uh, no one cares about tennis. <laughs> okay. Oh, nobody cares about that. Poor tennis. <laughs> Well, skip it with this. Well, which one? Do they not care about tennis or cricket? Which one? Which one? Uh, not I'd rather care? not care about cricket, but then we would lose the oval, you know, and that's become kind of a meme. True. So, like, yep. And actually, Scott, check your DMs. I, I threatened to send somebody to the oval in the clown server last night. <laughs> I noticed that. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> what they say? They're just like. Somebody else was replying. No, to me. brother. No, yeah. no, brother. <laughs> Somebody else was replying to my thing I said before that as well. Clown seats, clown sleep diagonally. Nike <laughs> uh, so. sounds uncomfortable. All right, mom and on. I can get the USO at Mount Emily, Oregon, during World War II by Japanese planes. Now that's, I don't think it was Japanese. I don't know because I do know that they sent those balloons and everything. We got, we got bombarded by balloons, but I don't think they. Japan. Yeah, but I don't think Japan actually flew any aircraft over our soil during wartime. I've never no. heard of that. Maybe it, uh, uh, maybe no. cars go after No, Alice, this is specifically in Oregon, but what were you going to say, Sohan? Oh, oh, okay. Only flew planes by uh, a harbor. Uh, you know, I, now that I think about it, I think I kind of remember this. I'm going to have to look more into this. But, yeah. Uh, anyway, go on, Mr. Soan. I'm just going to look this up real quick. Soan? Well, while he's looking that up, they the first use him. Oh, sorry. I, I'm looking between the first two. Like, uh, they both seem interesting, but you know what? 1943, U, uh, 15 German JU-88 sink Italian flagship Rome. Dang. Wow. Wow, okay, so that's, uh, that's when Italy uh, switched sides. Like, uh, or maybe, I don't know, when did when did Italy switch? Because this might have been a friendly fire incident now that I'm looking at that. Uh, I don't know, because it's near 1943. They probably were already, you know. Uh, October 13th, 1943. We're not there. So this is when Italy was still... The start. Well, yeah, I, I guess this is what pushed them, really, if they're getting hit by their own allies, you know? Um, 
Yeah, because on, on, it says here on October 13th, 1943, uh, the government of Italy declares war on its former Axis partner, Germany, and joined the battle on the side of the Allies. So this is before, so they were still part of the Axis, so I think... Nice. Bless you. I think this was, um, this was like a, probably a friendly fire accident, you know, a mistaken identity. But that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of airplanes, you know. Oh, yeah. Something weird happened. That's a lot of mess. Yeah. Uno mas, sir, sir Sohan. At the 43, Lieutenant General Omar Bradley flies from Algiers to Akrokef and Eswick. Ah. Looks like right. Robert De, a good Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro's mole has got to be 10 feet wide. Damn. Like it's so random. <laughs> Dude, well, no, it's from Weird Al. It's a song. When I hear Robert De Niro, I always think of Weird Al's Frank's 2000-inch TV song. Speaking uh, of which, there's a, there's a Weird Al movie coming out with Daniel Radcliffe playing Re Weird Al. Oh, God. Shit snacks. Yeah. Anyway, 1943, U.S., British, and French troops landed in Salerno uh, during Operation Avalanche. I misread that as uh, Salermo. Or Salerno? <laughs> Oh no, Palermo. There's too many so, Italian things, but um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, what were you gonna say, Sohan? Oh, the Salerno. Yeah, Salerno. Salerno. So. That sounds like some allergy medicine. <laughs> it does sound like some allergy medicine. Something that the pharmaceutical company's like, you need this, but not. But when you have anal leakage in your uh, for your side effects, they'd be like, yeah, no. I, that just does not uh, sound like a good time at all. Anyway, 1945, the yeah. first 1945, the first bug, quote unquote bug, in a computer program oh, discovered by Grace say, Hopper. Did, I say you missed the uh, 1944. Uh, which one? one? Uh, Red Army. Ah, uh, 1944. Uh, Red Army supported a coup in Bulgaria, instituting new communist government from 1946 through 1990. During the national uprising. Ah. Okay, so that's part of the whole Soviet history. That is. People should know that shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. They're going around occupying things, taking over nations. You know, every everything was in you know turmoil. You know, people, their neighbors were weak, and they went in there and ravaged. But you know, we call the U.S. the bad guys, though. Yeah, but we are the bad guys. Well, we, we are, are but everybody's are, but you know everybody's the bad. No one else has. No one else has clear oh, Yeah. It's real honest about it. Yeah. Well, here's something really interesting to anybody operating a computer. 1945, the first yeah, yeah. the first bug in a computer program was discovered by Grace Hopper when a moth was removed with tre with tweezers from a relay and taped into the log. So it was literally like, you know, captured like in a conveyor belt of tape and trapped in there. And so that's why we use bugs, you know, as a word, because it was at this is the first bug. It was literally an actual insect inside a, you know, a computation machine. <laughs> Damn, man. Yeah. I knew that. But that's cool. I did. Now you do. I bet you my dad knew. Yeah, the more you know. Right. Do, 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 do. Uh -huh. Do, do, do. Anyway, I believe it's Scott's turn. It's baseball what? history. 1945, Jimmy he Fox... Walks. It's his 534th and final home run. 500 club. Pretty good. Dang. In Japanese, Japanese in South Korea, Thailand, Taiwan, wait, South Korea, Taiwan, China, Indochina, surrendered to the Allies. Oh, wow. 1945. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because uh, they had surrendered uh, eight days prior to the mainland. So that was trickling down throughout all their uh, islands and everything. And remember the story of the guy, like, what was it, 72, 76? Still on the island fighting, you know, thinking the war was still on? Yeah. Yeah. And thank God his uh, commanding officer was still alive. Yeah. Yeah, he only, like, he only agreed to stand down if his CEO came over and relieved him of his duties, which did happen. So, yeah. Otherwise, he probably would have been killed, you know, because he was going around, you know, robbing from the locals and, you know, being a general nuisance and an actual threat. Um, so, 
Yeah, don't mind yep. my window behind me. I have a bright, shining light of doom beaming directly down onto my head. Maybe that's why I have such a headache right now. Scott, you okay, dude? You look like you're uh, shutting down. What's going on? Uh, watching the next one to the phone. I don't know. Ah, okay. Well, anyway, okay. Uh, uh, go ahead, go sir. I'm, just, I'm looking down at my phone. While it's all uh, so I'll delete him. Hey, no. well, open up task ma no, task master. Task manager? Talk master? Taskmaster? Isn't that the name of a villain? Yes. No, the Shockmaster is a really bad failed experiment with the WWE. No, no, no. No, okay, as yeah. Taskmaster is a real villain in Marvel. Oh, okay. yeah. His, ab his ability, he can copy people. Oh. <laughs> oh. He can copy everybody except for Deadpool, because Deadpool dances, and dance is not a, f a martial arts. Ah. Uh, anyway, uh, Scott, uh, it's your turn. Let's see. There's a 19... Oh, yeah, you already did the 1945 here, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Wait, no, 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 we didn't do that yet. We didn't do that yet. Oh, okay. We didn't do no baseball Hall of Fame yet. The baseball stuff yet. Ah. So, well, wait, which one you want? Okay. Well, you can do that 1945 or, like, the next 1945 directly under the, the black highlighted uh, article. That's a... That's an interesting name that guy has. Yep, Philadelphia A's Dick Fowler. No hits to St. Louis <laughs> Browns. One to nothing. <laughs> what a Fowler. <laughs> no, it reminds me of that cartoon uh, from uh, Two Stupid Dogs. What yeah, yeah, fowler. what a Fowler. Like, I, yeah, that's right. Yeah, when you guys say I'm like, don't be such a Dick Fowler. Oh my god. <laughs> For a second, I thought that was that said Dick Flower. It's just like, is it That's, blooming? Like, what's going on? That that phrase and oh, isn't that cute? But it's wrong. See, yep. my, it's my wrong. favorite one. My favorite one is oh, isn't that cute? Oh, come on in. Ah, you thought I was gonna say he was wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He broke the fourth wall, so to say that shit. <laughs> cha cha, real smooth. <laughs> Man, I really am turning into an old guy. Like I'm, I'm using these old dead memes and everything, thinking they're still relevant. Man, I'm should like, I do 1950? Uh, your choice, talk. man. Your turn. It's, it's all you, man. 1950. The Texas little darling closes at Mark Hellinger, Hellinger, yeah, Hell, New York City after 293 for four. I just wanted to talk to my southern twang for y'all. Well, butter my briskets and call me a homie G, I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, y'all got y'all some southern accent, but the wrong southern accent, that's pretty much Kentucky. Ah, uh, well, I well, do. Well, I guess you were, that's Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky? Yeah. Well, you know what, I'll tell you Ooh. one thing about Kentucky, if you look at the United States map, you can actually see a chef cooking a piece of chicken, and the chicken is Kentucky. No, oh, man, that, despite that shit, it didn't come from no damn Kentucky. Yeah, that's right, it started in Georgia or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Despite the name. Well, Mr. Scott, um, we have a 1954, uh, it's a, a black numbered 1954. If you want to do that one, that looked interesting. Oh. Ooh. Sure. 1954 Indians become first Cleveland team to win 100 games in a season. And I think there's like 162 in the total season. So. Dang, so that's pretty good. Yep. Yep. 10 to 6, you know? If they lost the other 60, so. I think uh, now it's uh, Alice's turn. If uh... Alice likes yeah, Elvis, I can do it. I can do it. Hang on. Oh, Elvis. Yeah, I like Elvis too. He's cool. Oh shit, snacks! It's the fat. It's the. Why does my hair Elvis? look like his hair in this picture today? It's kind of weird. It looks kind of reversed. Yeah, like you don't reversed? have. Kind of looks... You don't have like the side <laughs> part, but you have the top kind of like you know a little bit going. Yeah. Well, well, it looks like he. This is a uh, getting to the fat Elvis. Yes. Well, so that was like the 70s. 
That was probably like the 70s. It was well, fat, he died obviously. in 77, so, I mean. Uh, yeah. So, in 1964, Elvis Presley appears on the Ed Sullivan Show for the first time. Why did they use that picture of him instead of, like, the old, like, rock and roll, like, with the hip shaking? Why did they show that picture? I don't know, oh, so this, but, every time that you talk about Elvis, you always refer to this picture. Yeah. Like the, no. Well, there's I like a, the they hound use, dog or the jailhouse rock. They one. use universal <laughs> unilateral imagery. You know, they just like, okay, this is our stock photo of Elvis. Everything Elvis, this is the picture we're going to use. Like, they have no variety. But, Alice, what year was it again? I'm pretty sure. Uh, 1956. I did say it, but. Um, I thought yeah. you said 64. It might be my lisping. Ah, uh, okay. Shut up. All right, so what's the next? Oh, I don't want to do the tennis open. Yeah, do what I did. I skipped it. <laughs> yes. Why not? I'm sorry. I I, I am uh, I am bigoted to uh, tennis. Yeah. Well, Miss Alice, if you want to take it with your list, we have 19. Ooh, oh, okay, okay. So let me just overdo my list here. So, <laughs> okay. in 1957, we got the U.S. President Eisenhower signed his first civil rights <laughs> civil rights bill since the Reconstruction. <laughs> oh my God! He's probably doing. What are you trying to do a Daffy Duck impression? Well, no, you're making fun of no, you're trying to make fun of my list. <laughs> no, we're just a, we're just. <laughs> no, I, I overdid it. We're just. So cold. in 1957, we have the U.S. President Eisenhower. Uh, he signs the first civil rights bill uh, since the Reconstruction. Ooh. Yeah. No, we're not making fun of your list. We're just culturally appropriating it. Oh, dude, well, I, I also said uh, kosher, so I was culturally oh. appropriating the Jews. So. Well, one eighth Ooh. of me is offended. Oh. Oh, 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 dude! Oh, London? Dude, you, all you can do, you, you all you have to do is like exhale, walking past someone, and they can get offended. Oh, well, that's white privilege that you just exhaled. Oh, how dare Your you breath breathe smells. around? How dare you breathe my air, you colonizer? Yeah, I'm like, uh, I didn't colonize you guys. Uh, my family <laughs> came from farmers. No, you're colonizing. Bills. You're colonizing the air with your presence. <laughs> oh, I'm just too white. I'm sorry. You're not as no, white. Get that carbon dioxide away from me. <coughs> no. You're not as white as me, although Scott defeats my whiteness, you know. So, I don't know who's... We all got to get together one day. I your whiteness. All right, so what's my third one here? Do we have any uh, awesome deaths that have popped up yet? Uh, a riot. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, we'll have oh, a whiteness competition. Ooh, ooh. I like this one right here, 1960. Pakistan ends India's run of six consecutive Olympic field hockey gold medals. With uh, a 1 0 win over their subcontinent rivals at the Rome Games. Pakistan had a good field hockey team? What? Apparently. Dude, I didn't know field hockey was actually an Olympic sport. I yeah. thought it was just the hockey more you know. Boop, boop, boop. They're, they're, good. they're probably good at chucking rocks at you know, women. Oh, God. And shit. Wow. <laughs> Although Do you know why, why isn't that an Olympic sport? Stone. Uh, well, I mean, like, you know. Depending on the version of stoning, you know, I can compete, but, you know. Uh, Dude, as long as you got stoning. a good throwing arm. <laughs> oh, no, I was talking yeah. about the other kind. Yeah, and I oh, guess the oh. winner is not going to be able to, because they're going to, whoever takes the most stones isn't going to be able to tell the tale well, after. Well, but... you know, in back in the old days, when uh, the, the the original, like, form of hockey, or I'm not hockey, I mean, I'm sorry, soccer. The original game for soccer, uh, the, in, in the Mayan games, when they played it, it was a form of it. Oh, you're talking about hands. the hip one with the ball on the, uh, the, the hoop on the wall and up everything? In the, up on the wall. Yeah. And you couldn't use your hands. You had to kick it up in no, there. No, no, you had to use hoop. your hips. They, they bumped it with their your hips. hips. Your yeah. hips and your legs. You, yeah. can only use, you couldn't use your hands. Yeah. But uh, the winning teams would get sacrificed. Yeah, well, that's a misconception. Um, like, there's a whole thing Sounds about like that. Sounds like the Oval. Good well, God. then you tell that to the people of Chichen Itza who told me that. Okay, because I went to the tour in Chichen Itza. Well, you have that on room. me. Like, all I can say is... Chichen you know, what now? Yeah. Chichen Itza. It's down, in, it's down in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. Well, look at Alice hmm. flexing her, you know, culture, knowledge. Dude, the one time I ever left the country, I went to it. I, I don't forget it. I actually even have my birthday put and they like they printed off my birthday within the Mayan calendar. Oh, wow. On this newspaper. It smelled so horrible. Like when you open it up, I'm like, oh, I don't even want... I just, I rolled it back up and put it back in the cylinder. I'm like, God, it smells horrible. But no, like, yeah. No, but yeah, I have my birthday. I hope my mom still has it. But uh, I got my uh, birth date and everything printed on a rice paper from 
or some type of paper, or lion's paper or something that uh has my birthday put in with the Mayan calendar with all the Mayan symbols. That is awesome. done in place, too. You gotta get that Isn't framed, good one? Alice. You gotta find that and get that framed. Well, was it parchment paper? No, it was too thick to be parchment. Um, gotcha. it was it was rice paper. Um, it. I will have to ask my mom. I don't think she has. I think she's actually tossed it off. But um, oh no, no, that's what last, the fuck. No, no. The last time I saw it was when my mom and my sister still owned. Uh, my sister still owned the house that I grew up in. That was the last place I saw it. She might have thrown it away, not uh, knowing what it was. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm gonna give you an assignment. You got to call your mom tonight and, and ask about that. Obviously, tell her that you love her first and all that stuff, yada yada. But for me, I want to know if this still exists because this is cool. Like I personally, yeah, I, love, yeah, yeah. I love, yeah, yeah. I love, yeah. I love Mes Mesoamerican culture and history and everything. You know, I'm all about you, know, Aztec, Inca, Maya. You know, like the Inca or like, you know, like all that stuff, like. It's crazy because like you know, they, they all like just one day just fucked off, you know. Like what happened to them, you know? Like well, actually, what's really funny is like actually like I was in Mexico on my like I was twelve years old technically. It was about two and a half weeks before my uh, I had to go into seventh grade that we went there. So it was in August. So and today in history, I could have made it today in history. The day I arrived in Mexico was the day I got my very first becoming a woman. What? Becoming a woman. Okay, I don't... Does that mean that you lost your virginity? No. Oh. Are you fool? Oh. I was 12 years old. Oh, I get it. <laughs> okay, I see. Okay, I understand now. Yeah, the day I arrived in Mexico, I got my very first monthly bill. Yeah. I was going to say, you matched your shirt. Y yes! <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, fuck was having that? to buy a product in, in Spanish when you don't know it at all. Uh -huh. It was really fun. My fan just fell off my windowsill. So. Ha ha! That's because I was talking about the monthly bill. Well, <laughs> damn. I'm just kidding. Anyway, Alice, uh, why don't you take one more and then we'll do the split here. All right, okay. So we got in uh, 1963, we have Alabama Governor George Wallace. He served a federal injunction to stop orders of state police to bar black students from enrolling in white schools. That's huge. Yeah, well, he fucking... He fucking don't suck a dick. Served a federal injunction to stop the orders of state police to bar. So he stopped them from barring them. So that's good. It's a good thing. He, oh, yeah. He was, he was trying oh, to... Yeah, he he ordered them. some pretty shady shit, too, though. He I mean, ordered them to do it. Oh, wow. So he started it and stopped it. What a dick. Yeah, he's like, yeah, but then he's like, oh, I'm going to recant on that. Wow. Uh, what a kind of like how uh, Biden just recanted on uh, was it he recanted on saying that like basically half of America are uh, domestic terrorists. Oh, it sounds very familiar to today's world right now with what's going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh no, and then the race wars are back. Like, like, I don't know where this is coming from, but it must be coming from CNN. But luckily, people are not watching CNN too much anymore. Yeah. Anyway, I do it laugh. Let's... I do to laugh. Yeah, I do to laugh. But it's not as funny now that Brian Stelter's gone. Brian oh, Stelter! I'm Brian Stelter! I'm Brian Stelter! I'm going to smile! I'm Brian Stelter! Brian Stelter! <laughs> Dude, thank you, Mark Dice, for that. I, 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 uh, I love uh, Salty Crackers, you know, imp imitation thing. Brian Stelter! Dude. Brian Stelter! <laughs> no, no, they're actually, they're doing a rip-off of uh, what Mark Dice did originally. Mark Dice originally did the Brian Stalter like high voice. Oh my god. So now everybody else is doing it ever since he did it. Jeez. Hi, Brian Stalter. Anyway, I'm going to do the split here. I'm going to mute myself so I can get some stuff done. Alright. Welcome to part two. We yeah, are. I'll do that with my Welcome to part two. F please stop flipping off the people on the camera, dude. Like. No, oh, no. I, I love you people, but I'm, I'm giving the middle finger to those who don't like the show. Ah. Uh. Well, if they don't yeah. like the show, would they even be watching it to watch you flip them off? No, they're gonna. Yeah, of course they will. You uh, know, that's how do you think the woke culture works? I, they I watch shit they don't like to be angered. I don't know. I'm not woke. <laughs> well, I'm not woke. No, I'm awakened, but I, I'm not woke. I have awakened. Yes. Anyway, 1965, awakened. Francois Mitterland was nominated for French presidency. That's pretty interesting. 
1965 as well, the L.A. Dodgers future baseball Hall of Fame pitcher Sandy Koufax threw his fourth career no-hitter and perfect uh, in his first perfect game in a one-to-none win over the Chicago Cubs at Dodger Stadium. Huh. Very cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. And then, uh, ooh, 1965, Tibet was made an autonomous region in China. Mm -hmm, Tibet. I support a free Tibet. So, I actually, uh, I have a funny story. Um, China. China. Uh, I have a funny story, though. Like, back, like, many years ago when I actually did have a Twitter, I, I tweeted China. Like, ag they're actually, like, you know, the CCP's, you know, like, Twitter. I tweeted them, hey, China. You know, and I actually said the whole word "f you," uh, hashtag free Tibet, and then Tibet straight up like sent me a private message wishing me well and everything, and I actually had a little bit of a conversation with them. Like, so I was. <laughs> That's some. I, I I think I you know, like, and I backed off because like I think I might have been like starting to stoke the fire of an international incident, you know, because like probably I, yeah. <laughs> That's like, crazy. You should have took a picture of that. I do. I have screenshots. I have screenshots. Yeah. Remind me after the show to send them to you. Um, sure. But yeah, no, I have screenshots. It's fucking hilarious. Anyway, Dude, I want to see those too, man. Yeah. 1966, the National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act was signed into law by U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson. So, uh, let me look this up here. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. I have too many. I have too many tabs here. So, let's see here. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, going back a little bit, you know, September 9th, 1942, a Japanese float plane drew, dropped incendiary bombs on Oregon State Forest, the first air attack on the U.S. mainland in the war, launching from the Japanese sub I-25. Nobuo Fujita piloted his light aircraft over the state of Oregon and firebombed Mount Emily, allying the, uh, alighting a state forest. So that did happen, like, and that is crazy. It was from one of Japanese uh, aircraft-carrying submarines. You know, like, they were toying around with that idea. Because um, you know, imagine, like, you know, because they, they can't carry, like, an entire squadron, but imagine a submarine popping up, launching a couple planes, and then popping back away, you know? Like, that's that's nuts. Oh, shit's next, man. That's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. Anyway, the National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act was enacted in the, in the U.S. in 1966 to empower the federal government to set and, and administrate or administer New safety standards for motor vehicles and road traffic uh, traffic safety. Seat seat belts, probably. Uh, seat belts. Seat belts. Probably, actually, like you know, my dad uh, has uh, a story involving that. He knew a guy, like, cause, cause we know, like, you know, back in the day, just you know, back in like you know the 60s, 70s, and stuff, in the early 80s, cars didn't have seat belts, and the first belt was a lap belt. Apparently, uh, you know, belts were like so unfashionable that people actually like removed them after they were put in. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah. you, I'd rather risk my life and die instantly than have an excruciating pain of dying. Well I mean like you know, seatbelts, you know, like I understand their their purpose, but you know, the whole like, you know, making it a law and all that stuff, like it's it's obviously like, you know, for the most part, because, you know, and I wanna what? I wanna uh I wanna like, you know, really enforce the statement for the most part is it's all a scam to just get, you know, more money, fill more quotas, you know, get more tickets, all that stuff. But, you know... And I don't know, it's not just that, but they don't want to scrape people up off the road who go through the windshield. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, for the most part, safety belts are, are mainly only for you. And they're like, you know, oh, for the safety of others. And that only applies to if you, like, you know, fly from your windshield and become an obstacle outside of your seat, you know. So right. that's, that's why I said, you know, for the most part, you know, so... But, yeah... Anyway, Scott, it's your turn. All right. How about we just use 1970? All right. 1970, Bowie Coon suspends Denny McLean for carrying a gun. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude. Damn, he got caught. Dude, this is like a Joker thing right here. Remember when he had, he had a gun at the Children's Hospital? Yeah. yeah. I wonder if it was in his locker. It was straight up. He found him carrying it. But. Uh, well, he was. it says here carrying a gun. You know, like, oh, okay. not yeah. for having a gun or something, but for uh, straight up, like, having it on his person. You know? So, wow. How about this? Yeah, how about this one before John Lennon? 1971, one 
1,000 convicts riot and seize Attica, New York prison. Oh, yeah, I remember hearing about that. You know, that was a crazy riot. And uh, they actually, like, it was like, it, it like, they, t- they took it over. They, they took the people hostage, you know, the guards and everything. Um, I think the military actually, like, got involved and such. The National Guard, at least. So. Yeah. Yeah. That might have been the another riot. One. I'm not sure. But that's crazy. A thousand convicts? Like, holy crap, dude. Mm-hmm. Also, 1971, John Lennon and Yoko Ono appear on Dick Cavett show on ABC oh. TV. All right. Gustin. Yep. Yeah, he does. Sohan does not like Yoko Ono. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she, she, yeah, meh, you know. Yoko Ono. Whenever she walks in, I go, oh no. I, I don't know. Anyway, one more, <laughs> Mr. Scott. Uh, unless you want me to skip the tennis, I'll read it, but... Well, um, you know, 1972, the blue one looks interesting. Sure. 1972, connection found between Mammoth Cave Ridge and Flint Cave systems in Kentucky, joining 144 miles of passages, making it the world's longest known cave system, later mapped at 420 miles. Oh, 420! Blaze it! Raise it! Yeah, that, that's, damn, like, 144 miles later to be, like, 420 miles. That's a lot of caves, dude. You know? For sure. Uh, Miss Alice, if uh, you aren't busy, although you are at work, and I feel feel really bad every time we get to you, because I don't want to take your attention away from your job. But, yeah. Um, well, she's not mute, unmuted yet, so uh, I'm just going to move on to Sohead. Yeah. Uh, your choice. You can start with whatever. Oh, the, uh, the old, um, the old crutch, you can always just go straight to the, uh, the highlighted ones. Holy shit. 1972, Soviet Union beats the United States 51-50 to in the most controversial game in international basketball history with U.S. leading 40, oh, 50 to 49. The final three seconds is replayed three times until the Soviets finally win. Holy shit. Wow, what the hell? That's that's bullshit. Hey, that's why it's called controversial. That's beyond controversial. That's straight up wrong, dude. You can't, like, replay this until you win. Like, that's that's Fucking literally rigged. cheating. I think I watched this, actually, on a, a video on this. Like this is essentially a real life form of loading from your last quick save. It was it was kind of they fixed it a little bit. They there was there was calling things that did like they they were calling so it was basically a fixed thing. Yeah. They kept yeah. they kept calling you know something that was not like real and they kept doing the set the playing it over. Yeah. Man, I hate it when they do that. Like you know, oh we're losing recount you know oh the votes are invalid. Okay, whatever you mm-hmm. losers, you're just sad, you know. Okay, uh, 1973, because I'm skipping tennis. Alright. 1973, fourth place finish in the Italian Grand Prix at Onza is enough to clinch Jackie Stewart his third Formula One World's Drivers Championship. Nice. And like every now and then, like, you know, the picture is very appropriate. He's just like, woo, you know? Hell yeah. I can go fast. Yeah, left turn. And oh, here no, we no, go. No, 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 that's Formula One. That uh, is fancier. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Like L left turn. I like to go really fast. L left turn. Am I being fancy or do I have to, like, you know, uh, oh, have, no. like, you know. Also, also, 1975, Paul McCartney and Wings begin their wings over the world tour in Southampton, England. 65 concerts in Europe, Australia, Canada, and United States run through October of 76. Wow, so he was old, he was out on the road for over a year. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And Dang. also, fun fact, he's also the uncle of Jack Sparrow. Ah. Oh. Yeah, in the, in the fifth Pirates movie, he's Uncle Jack. Oh, oh okay. Oh, and so Keith, he... And Keith, yeah, and Keith Richards of uh, the Rolling Stones is uh, Jack's father. Huh. I can Teague. 
Well, that's interesting. I have not seen any Pirates of the Caribbean movies, but uh, that's a pretty cool cameo right there. Anyway, yep, uh, let's see here. 1976, New Zealand government established the country's first centralized electronic database through the Wanganui Computer Act, raising questions about the state's ability to gather information on its citizens. Here we go. Big brother. God. We went on up into 1978. Ayatollah Khomeini called for an uprising in the Iranian army. Well, that's not good. Literally doing no. uh, what uh, what our government is uh, trying to accuse uh, a certain orange man of doing, you know? So. And then, uh, let's see here, 1978, U.S. Open Women's Tennis, Flushing Meadows, New York. That's a strange name, Flushing Meadows. That, that sounds like a euphemism for something very filthy. Uh, Chris Everett won her fourth straight U.S. singles title, defeating fellow U.S. citizen Pam Shriver 7-5, 6-4, the first time an event was played on hard courts. Cool. Yeah, I remember like yesterday or the day before, I was, I was reading an article about tennis, and it was like the last time it was played on grass, you know, or something like that. Uh, yeah, okay. if you, if, I'm going to say, if you wanted to, you could have skipped the... Uh... And went to 1979. Uh, which one? The highlighted South one? Uh, no, no, not the highlighted one. The South African Ferrari driver. Uh, uh, well, I think it's uh, Scott's turn, actually. So he can take this if he wants. 1979 South African Ferrari driver Jody Schechter wins the Italian Grand Prix at Monza to clinch his first Formula 1. Formula One World Drivers Championship, first of RSA champion, first RSA champion. RSA. Mm -hmm. What does that stand for? What does that stand for? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rivest, Shamir, and Adelman, the inventors of the technology. I don't. Okay. Is it well? That that says data security, and that's not. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, what is this racing? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yep, uh, the Italian oh, Formula One. Uh, racing systems analysis. Okay. So the first racing <clears throat> systems analysis Doubt champion. It. Okay, well, I guess, like, you know, with, you know, data and everything, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. If anybody knows more than me, please uh, either speak up or if you're a viewer, add something in the, just in the comment section. Start a dialogue. We will talk back. Trust me. So. Anyway, continue on, Mr. Scott. Um, all right, fine. Hmm. So many, there's so many tennis ones. Well, 1982, the blue one here is uh, is an interesting quote there. 1982, your arms are too short to box with God. Opens at Alvin Theater, New York City. Runs for 69 performances. What's with you? I'm just imagining somebody like coming at God. God's just like holding it on his hand. And like, you know, his head, like, you know, the, the classic cartoon, like, you know, the guy's, like, head is running into the hand. He's like, yeah, 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 <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. Uh, this other 82, right before 83. That's interesting. 1982, Comstoga. No, Comstoga 1, first private commercial rocket makes suborbital flight. Whoa. That's interesting, dude. Way before, like, SpaceX or, um, or, uh, what, uh, Virgin or, uh, what's, what's, uh, what's his face? The Amazon guy. Like, what's his space thing again? Jeff Bezos, probably. Yeah, Jeff Bezos. That, what's that... his space program called? Because Elon Musk is SpaceX. Uh, um, Richard Branson had Virgin. Maybe he sold it off. I don't know. We haven't heard much about him recently. Um. But no, like you know, he had like you know the the, the penis rocket, and he took uh, he took William Shatner up into space. Like he, what, what's his? Okay, uh, nobody knows. Like okay, what is what is Amazon's space project called? Let's see here. Uh, project Kuiper. Okay, Kuiper. So I guess they don't have like a space company. It's just called Project Kuiper. Yeah. Is that related to the Kuiper Belt? Uh, 
spelt differently. I, I get your okay. joke. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Yep. Uh, anyway, Uno Mas, Sir Scott's. 1983, Vitas Jurulatis. Gurul Ida. What? I can't read. That's his house that Martina <coughs> Navratilova can't beat 100 ranked male tennis player. That's his house. So he betted his house. Wow. That's crazy. It like, is. Gambling is a real addiction. Um. There's another one here if you want to take a fourth one, you know, up to you, like right before what you just read, the, the Black 83. That's, you know. Hmm. 1983 Radio Shack announces their Color Computer 2 or Coco 2. I remember Coco. At least from Foster's Home from Imaginary Friends. Coco, 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 you know. Radio Shack, man, that brings me back. Yeah. Man. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I my uh, cell phone from Radio Sick. Yeah, I used to get batteries and, like, you know, like various other things from Radio Shack. I wonder if they're still around, you know, or let's see here. Bro, I don't know. Does Radio Shack I still exist? Um, the company also now owns once popular brands like Pier One, Linens and Things, and Dress Barn. What the hell? My first job was at Linens and Things. So, wow. So does Radio Shack still exist? Short answer, Radio Shack proper still lives online, albeit with a slimmer catalog. Meanwhile, about 400 stores bearing the Radio Shack name operate independently of REV, Associated Press Reports. So, uh, okay, well that's interesting. So they're still around, but in their, they've gone into other industries. Linens and things, that's weird. Because that used to be owned by TJX, which owns TJ Maxx and Marshalls, you know? So that's interesting. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Alice is muted, and I'm going to be talking slowly to see if she's paying attention and if she wants to take a turn, and it's not looking like it, so, so in. Go for it. Yeah. 1985, President Ronald Reagan ordered sanctions against South Africa. What the fuck happened then? Uh, apartheid. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Immediately knew the answer to that one. 1986, New York City jury indicts Soviet Na United Nations employee Chindali Akharov of spying. Dang spies. I was going yeah. around sapping my sentries, you know? And uh, if, uh, if Alice is listening, you know, uh, make sure to tell your boy Ooh. toy I said Team Fortress 2! What about Team Fortress 2? Uh, I made a joke about spies sapping sentries just now. So. Oh, shoot. Yeah, sorry. I had a customer and stuff, and now yeah, I'm not yeah. having a schedule. So. You're at work. You really should not actually be here right now. Like, you should be focusing no, on No, I work. shouldn't, but I, 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 I just want to be here for uh, yeah. moral support. I appreciate it. Believe me, I, I you know, like, you're my... Plus, you're I was my, listening uh, to you, but I had to mute you down when I had a customer come in. They were looking for some protein. Pro pro protein or propane? Propane! Anyway, Mr. Soen, continue on, good sir. Mm hmm. Let's see. 1987, Gary Hart admits on Nightline to cheating on his wife. Oh, man. Wow. I wonder what Gary Hart is this. People don't tell me it's the Bret Hart, Gary Hart. Well, their father. Gary Hart, let me look at this. Mark Mike, you have United States Senator. Okay, yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, that explains why he cheated on his wife. He's a senator. He has no convictions. So. Yep, it's him. Yep. Uh, Uno Mas. Okay. Uh, also... For a second from the glare, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, continue. Continue. What no, I was going to say, from a glare, when I saw the sports history, when I was looking at it, because I had a glare on my phone, it looked like I saw Bill Clinton in the picture. Yeah, it kind of does Isn't look that? a little bit like him, yeah. 1987, Piper of the Celtics gave NBA free throw streak of 59. Dang. That's a lot of free throws right there. Now, is this, like, in the line? Like, is he just sitting there doing shots, or is this, like, over his, like, you know, career? It's a consecutive 
thing. It's like yeah. oh, wow. each game. Okay. We move it on up into 1987, my year. Major League pitcher or Major League Baseball pitcher Nolan Ryan struck out his four hundred four thousand five hundredth batter. Wow. Wow. It's a lot of strikeouts right there, man. Jeez. Yeah, he's known basically for that, so. In uh, 1989, U.S. Open Women's Tennis, Steffi Graf retained her title, defeating Martina Navratilova 3-6, to 7-5, and 6-1. to Hey, Xander, 1990, you got to do that George one. Uh, I was actually looking at these. Uh, 1990, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush and Mikhail Gorbachev met in Helsinki and urged Iraq to leave Kuwait. Yeah, this is uh, before, you know... Desert Shield, Desert Storm, the first invasion, the first war of Iraq. You know? So, yeah. It didn't, because I had it. It's senior. Boxing, it didn't. It showed me I have nothing. Are you okay, Sohan? I died about a year or two ago. Alright. Dang. Anyway, I believe it is now Scott's turn. Uh, okay. Should I do the 91 or... Up to you, man. Your turn, your choice. Oh, just 1991, Mike Tyson indicted for rape of Desiree Washington. Dang. Indicted. Oh, so that means that he was, uh, he was, like, charged? Is this, like, after court? What, is, what does indicted mean? It means charged, yeah. Like, okay. brought up on charges. Okay, I thought so. So, dang, yeah. More about this. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise. Did he actually get charged with it though? Yes, uh, he well, spent like two. He spent like two years in prison for that. Dang. That's what. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, uh, Scott, there's a 91 here as uh, as well. Another 91. Pretty cool. Yeah. 91. Only 1,695 fans watch Boston Red Sox play Cleveland, and that's like you can have 20,000 fans there. That's like nothing. Yeah, that's like yeah, it's an empty house right there. But on the other side of the coin, just next year. Beautiful. First time Baltimore Orioles draw 3 million fans at home. Dang. Hi, yo. Dang. That's pretty cool. Oh, is this the infamous Howard Stern debut thing? Uh, yes. No, As Fartman? Not, not, oh yeah, well, I guess, yeah, Fartman. It doesn't say whether or not it's the first or what, but it might be the debut. I never 1992 heard of it. MTV Music Award, Video Music Awards. Howard Stern appears as Fartman. All right. So what? Who is Fartman, Alice? What is that about? With a Fartman, he he came in like hanging from the rafters and coming down in like a superhero suit, and oh. then he 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 bent his butt over and he made a little, like, a fake fart. And it knocked like the uh, part of the podium down for like their reveal of their podium of that year or something like that. It was pretty funny. So his superpower is extreme flatulence. Yeah, just like that. Was it like like that one guy in Mystery Men that was Pee Wee Herman's character? Oh yeah, the the fart guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. Mystery Men was such well, a weird movie. Mystery Men came out after this though, and I think maybe his character was derived after Fart Man. Uh, yeah, that would make sense. But Mystery Men was such a weird movie, you know. Like I don't know if it was good or bad or what. It was. Janine yeah. Garoppolo as like the bowler. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have the construction worker guy. Then you have the the rage dude who just like yeah. the, the, that was such an awkward scene. Like when they were like in the parking structure and he's just like jumping on the car. It's like, dude, calm down. What are you doing? You freaking psychopath, man. Like crazy. <laughs> anyway, Scott, you have one more. All right. Let's see. Well, we have a baseball one in '92. You know, we have a space one in '94. Um, I'll do the 1994 space shuttle STS-64 or Discovery 20 launches into orbit. Ah. Yep. Man, I miss the space program. You know, I miss the shuttles and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like as we heard in the, the, the Jabberwocky last Sunday, um, you know. Uh, I had uh, the recording of my mom and I from like what 2011 or something. You know, talking about it. That just, just a year or you know, give or take before the actual cancellation. It had been announced. We knew about it. It was coming, but it was before the actual like you know ca cancellation. You know, you know, uh, 
like what, what, what's the word like the, the, the dates you know of it actually being done man I, I, I remember like you know when that day came and went like yep yeah, that's it we're done you know did we really win the yep. space race you know when you know the, the Soviets or now the Russians still have a space program you know and then like remember and, and we I've never heard anything about this since remember when like the start of the whole Ukraine thing and all that stuff we had a guy up in the ISS and he was stranded yeah. up there because we have no way to get there. You know, Elon Musk wasn't too happy, you know, going, you know, what's, what's, what was going on. Uh, so we didn't know if he was going to go up there. So the, the only people who actually get him were the Russians. And, you know, we weren't too happy with them. So I don't know if that guy is still stranded or what. You know, I haven't looked it up. But, I mean, that, that was nuts, dude. You know, that was nuts. Is that guy stranded in the ISS right now? Uh, no, no, probably not now, but, like, when the when the whole Ukraine thing first started, we had a, a U.S. astronaut in the International Space Station, and the only way for us to get there is through the Russians. And, obviously, they probably wouldn't, like, help us because, you know, when they invaded Ukraine, we uh -huh, sided yeah. with Ukraine, so now we're enemies. So, you know... We shouldn't be, in my opinion. Well, we're all people on this yeah. Earth, and it's about time we start acting like it, but, you know... Small people, small minds, small, you know, things. Like, you know, nobody sees a big picture, you know? Small dicks. But... Oh, oh, no, oh, hang on, hang on. Say that one more time. Small dicks. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. my buddy right there. Hello, buddy. Hey, buddy. How you doing, hey. buddy? This is, this is the other Charlie, actually. Oh. You remember when I had the hotel night? She oh, was, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's here, so she says "small dicks" with what you're saying, and I was like, "Ha ha ha!" She, this got to be, this got to be nice. put on here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nucka. Dang. Well, could you please uh, not uh, say that on the show ever again? Thank oh, you. oh, oh, no, no. I, well, it was a CKA. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, like, I suppose you're nothing right. Nothing matters. So, yeah. I'm gonna give you a knuckle sandwich then. Hey, Freddie Mercury. <laughs> with my fist. To your face. Damn. Better be some bread on that. You know? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll put some bread between my knuckles, or between my fingers, and so you, like, as I punch you, you get a little bread squish before you get the knuckle. Yeah, it provides a little bit of a cushion, you know? It's like a, like a makeshift, you know, boxing glove with what you got in the kitchen. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, <laughs> Mr. Sohan, it is your turn. Okay, what year? Uh, oh, yeah, 99 if you want, you know. Let's see, uh, 1994, a TU-22 crashes in Aeroflot E-U-134A at 0 kill, oh, 7 kill. Damn, holy shit, a plane crash. Damn. Under the plane. Crashes into Aero Float 2134A. Like, that sounds like another vehicle. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. Yeah. So it was uh, uh, an, a, a, a collision. Was it in the air, though? Like, let's see here. I don't know. It doesn't say. Let's see. Let me look also, this up. Also, 1997, Sing Fiend accepts Mitchell's principles on paramilitary disarmament. Ah. Good. Okay. 1999 MTV Video Music Awards. Lauren Hill and Will Smith win. Ah. Alright. In the year 2000. Uh, In the year 2000. Yep. In the year 2000. The U.S. Open's women's tennis saw Venus Williams defeating her first, or getting her first U.S. title, defeating fellow U.S. citizen Lindsay Davenport, 6-4, 7-5. Damn! Isn't that Serena? Uh, Venus. Venus Williams. Ain't that her picture? Uh, Serena? no, that's Venus. Serena has bigger hair, like... <laughs> she has bigger hair. She does. <laughs> Like, oh lord! Well, Venus is actually the older of the two, and I learned that yesterday. Um, but yeah, no, Venus has like a shorter cut. Serena has like, like more of a an Oprah kind of look, you know. 
Anyway, moving on up into 2001, Band of Brothers. Ooh, wow, great show. Based on a book it was by... was a great show. Yeah, yeah. Based on a book by Stephen E. Ambrose, created by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks, premiered, and it was then the most expensive miniseries ever made. And Dude, it was, but it was totally worth it. Like, it was such a good show. Really good show. And actually, like, uh, I have a, a family a family friend of ours that was in, uh, he's no longer with us, but he was in the 101st Airborne. Oh, wow. And he, uh, I remember having a talk with him saying that, um... It, it was more active, accurately depicted in that show than any other person, a, like a documentary or anything. Like it was amazing. Well, like you know, I'm gonna give some. I'm gonna give a little bit of backstory and everything. I'm gonna go back a little bit, you know, with Tom Hanks. Like you know, in uh, Saving Private Ryan, they wanted to make it so authentic, so real, and they did. And um, they did. They did. And, during like the you know their first test screening and everything like you know all the stuff they're doing or like the first private premiere or whatever, uh, they actually had veterans of World War II who had been on you know in, you know in Normandy on they were there on D Day right they were there like they were on you know, like like a couple of them I think maybe were on Omaha Beach but like you know there were people World War II veterans watching it and they had to get up and leave because it was that real they started having flashbacks like it was literally yeah. like they were looking back in time into something that they actually experienced in life and it was too much so with that said yeah. Tom Hanks you know wanted to continue you know that you know that uh that spirit and everything and you know created here by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks really strived for authenticity and historical accuracy and he hit the nail on the head as hard as you can well, without going back in time with a video camera you know like oh yeah dude yeah like based off of like like uh, records of what people experienced to uh, to all of it yeah like well like the same thing uh, the only good part of uh, what the movie Pearl Harbor was <laughs> was actually the scene fuck the whole love thing but like when yeah. Pearl Harbor actually happened the only thing that was actually depicted in realisticness from Michael Bay was the bombing of it yeah the whole rest of the movie is just garbage but like it's all Hollywood romance crap but like yeah the action you know like that's real yeah no we just want to know about history like you don't have to make a love interest oh is you have Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett in it oh <sighs> Yeah, well, Hollywood's yeah. going to Hollywood. What are you going to do, you know? All we can do is yeah, just, Hollywood you know... Hollywood is Hollywood. All we can do is boycott things, you know, and enforce them by not giving them money to actually make something that, you know, would yield a validity to our expenditure, you know? Mm -hmm. So... But yeah, but like, yep, you yep. know, <laughs> at risk of expanding the topic even more, have you seen The Pacific? Uh, I've only watched a couple episodes of The Pacific, but I haven't watched them all, and I, I really actually... That's on HBO too, right? I think so. It's from the same, you know, same people. Like, you know, it's just... Yeah, same people. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, I actually, I started watching it, and I was trying to get my uh, boyfriend at the time to watch it with me, but he had no interest in it, so I never watched wow. it. So I'm actually thinking of uh, getting it, uh, just re-getting it again. But, yeah. um... Because I want to watch the Pacific, because uh, that's, like like that's, like, the one part of World War II that I'm not so, uh... A, like, uh acclimated with is uh what happened in the pacific as to what happened in europe yeah because in europe you know it was like all sorts because i mean the pacific it was all sorts of countries as well but you know they were a lot smaller you know and and everything you know it was mainly you know japan because china was having their revolution they were getting the shit you know their their teeth kicked in by the russians and the japanese the japanese were fighting everybody you know and then we got in there um and it was just it was nuts and like it, it was, it's a lot different because it was all mainly water wars. You know, it's all water and aircraft. Whereas in Europe, it's all mostly yeah, land. Yeah, you know? it was basically the island wars, basically. Yeah. The island hopping campaigns and whatnot. Anyway, getting back on track in the year 2001, two Al Qaeda linked suicide bombers disguised as journalists killed Northern Alliance leader Ahmed Shah Massoud by detonating explosives hidden in a camera and a battery pack belt while interviewing him in Tanahar Province, northeastern Afghanistan. Dang, sneaky, sneaky. Look it. Two more days. Two more days? What do you mean? The ninth. The ninth? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I see. Yeah. Anyway, Alice, if you want to take an article, uh, it's your turn. You know? Yeah. Customer. Okay. Uh, so ahead. 
Okay, uh, 2004, bomb explodes outside of Australian Sea in Jakarta, killing 10 people. Jakarta is uh, Indonesia, by the way. Okay. Thank you, I don't need to search that up. So cool. Ooh. You're a little cute, but no, I skip. I skip. Alright. Oh, fuck. On second thought, uh... <laughs> No. 2007, 24th MTV Music Video Awards, Rihanna featuring Justin Timberlake. Uh, no, yeah, well, 2007, 24th MTV Music Video Awards, Rihanna featuring Jay-Z, Justin Timberlake, and Fergie Wynn. Oh my god. He looks okay. Dude, what's wrong with her eyes? Like, uh, Rihanna, she kind of, her eyes kind of look a little weird. What's going on with that? I don't know. The whole, uh -huh. Her whole face just has it just doesn't look normal. I don't know what's going on. Am I? It, it, is it me? Like it just something just looks off, you know? It does look off. Yeah. Little, Ooh. Yeah. And then Jay looks angry. Six, so. Thousand seven Farm A twenty held in Randall Island, New York City. Formers include Willie Nelson, John Mellencamp. Neil Young, you. Matthews, Merrill Haggard, Billy Joel, Shaver, Greg Allman, the Allman Brothers Band, Alan Crows, Staya. Oh yeah, that one name is a Jewish rapper. Huh. A Jewish rapper. That's uh, that's interesting. Buster, the Derek Trucks Band. Warren Hayes and Jimmy Stir. Oh, that's a uh, that's a huge that lineup. A lot of people, a lot of bands, a lot of things. Yeah, including the Jewish rapper. The Jewish rapper. I I never knew those two things could coincide at the same time, but that's pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Uh, also, 2010, a court um, in the Philippines order Della Marcos. To pay, repay the government almost twenty, the two hundred eighty thousand for funds taken from the National Food Authority by Ferdinand Marcos in nineteen eighty three. Holy shit! Dang. Um, I'll be right back. Um, keep on going. Uh, sure. Move on in the burst if need be. I should be back in a few minutes. So, be right back. Sure. 2010, 100 people are killed and 350 are injured after a wave of attacks across Iraq. 20, oh, another 2012, 2012, uh, 17 people are killed and at least 40 injured after two car bombs exploded in Aleppo, Syria. Oh my god, this is some bad stuff. 22, oh shit. 2013, 18 people are killed in conflicts between government and Boko Haram troops in Borno State, Nigeria. Another 2013, 44 people are killed and 45 are injured after a bus crashes in the ravine in North Guatemala. Holy shit. And also 2013, 60 people are killed in conflict between rebels and loyalists in the Central African Republic. So where are we at? 2013. Okay. Um, would you mind if I read that? Read it there? I did three. Go ahead, man. All you. All right, so ten tennis or? No, 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 no. Thir 2013, Barry. Okay. Barry averages film Filthy Gorgeous, the Bob Guccione story about the life of Penthouse founder Bob Guccione premieres at the Toronto International Film Festival. Could be Guccione, I don't know. I don't know, it just sounds weird. Guccione. But I think I said it right the first time, Guccione. Yeah. Alright. Hey. Also 2013, 
U.S. Men's Open Tennis, Spaniard Rafael Nadal wins his second. U.S. title beats Novak Djokovic 6-2, 3-6, 6-4, and 6-1. Which I'm pretty sure he was the underdog in that, so... It was a good fight like for it. Nadal. Yeah. Um, 2014, Ally, Ali, Hosieni, Kamen, Kamenai, Supreme Leader of Iran, undergoes prostate surgery. He can get his ass Xander operated go? on. Where did Xander go? Uh, he said he'll be back. Okay. 2015. Queen Elizabeth II becomes Great Britain's longest reign monarch at 63 years and 7 months, beating the previous record set by her great-grandmother, Victoria. Oh my god. If only she could have lasted until Friday, it would have really, really made a historical event. Wow, no way. What no. happened? 2015, Queen Elizabeth II becomes Great Britain's longest reign monarch at 63 years and 7 months, beating the previous record set by her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. Wow. Now, if she would have... No, if she would have, like, lived a couple of more days, she could have passed that. Well, yeah, well, beyond that, like, she was only, like, 100 so much. Like, actually, let me look this up, because she's the longest reigning monarch in England. But not in history. So uh, let's see here. Uh, Elizabeth II reign. Let's see here. Uh, she. Uh, how long did she reign? Um, she had ruled for uh, two uh, for twenty three thousand two hundred twenty six days, sixteen hours, and about thirty minutes, marking thirty marking seventy years of marriage. But, but, but hold on a second. What is that? In years, though, so twenty-three thousand two hundred twenty-six divided by three hundred sixty. Hold on a second. Sixty-five. Sorry, equals <coughs> sixty-three years. Huh. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, I got some more. All right. Two more. Everybody remembers this shit. 2016, North Korea conducts its fifth nuclear test at the Hunzian Re nuclear test site at the time. It's largest ever at 10 kilotons, but super uh, superseded by the 2017 test. Dang. Man, North Korea, you know, like, man, they are such a wild card. You know, they're such a trash nation, but they have nuclear capabilities. Like, it's, it's crazy. The you know? only reason why they have nuclear capabilities is thanks to a motherfucker named Bill Clinton. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, take here uh, 2017. Oh. Egyptian archaeologists announced the discovery of a 3,500-year-old tomb of a goldsmith and his family in Dra Abu Naga, Egypt. Ooh. Huh. But yeah, when you left, I did back-to-back -back deaths. Dang. A lot of deaths, huh? One involving Boko Haram. Ooh. That's that's a nasty name I know of. Uh, well, let's see here. 2018, uh, Air Ring Mass Games began in North Korea, speaking of the Norks, uh, to mark uh, the country's 70th anniversary, featuring tens of thousands performing. Huh. What and then... Oh, I got one more. 2018... CBS chief lays movies movies uh, deports from the company after six more women make allegations of sexual abuse in the New Yorker. Ah, uh, here we go. Me too movement. Hashtag me too. Eh. Hate that crap. Like you know, if 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 some you know like like some of them are victims and you know that sucks. But for those who are not victims or they think they're victims or they're just trying to like ride the coattails. Like, you know, just trash. Like, the majority of those people are just trash. Trying to get their five minutes of fame, trying to get a little bit of money out of it, whatever their intentions are, their goals, you know. There's actual, like, people who are actual victims out there, and you're utilizing this whole thing for your own personal benefit. You know, fuck you. Just sick. Yeah, there are people like you 
you might be afraid to, you know, come out of the woodwork. You might be afraid to come tell the truth because, you know, I'm going to get blasted. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Uh, 2018, Russian police detained over 1,000 people amid nationwide protests against pension reform. So that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, that was my three. Uh, so uh, it is Alice's turn if she does so wish. Uh, let's see here. Um, hey, Scott. 2019. Well, Scott's not here. He left again. Oh. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. He. All right. Well, uh, Sohan, uh, take 2019 if you want, or I can take a few more. You read while I was absent, so I can uh, balance it out if you want. Australia experiences is early. Oh, never mind. wait, wait, okay. Oh, it's the virus. <laughs> yeah, no, Australia, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2019, Australia experiences its earliest and most severe start of the fire season after dozen, uh, fi after fighting dozens of bushfires in Queensland and New South Wales. Music history. Yep. Uh, 2019's John Legend and wife. Chrissy Teigen fired back at Donald Trump on social media after he called him boring and filthy mouthed in tweets over criminal justice reform. Huh. huh. Wow, that's pretty cool. They fought, they, 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 they shot back at him. So it's, uh, we have a troll fight, a troll fight between, you know, two celebrities and a sitting president. Mm -hmm. What does this world come to? We are living in clown times, man. Dude, 100 years from now, somebody's probably going to be watching back, maybe on this video. Hello from the past. How you doing? We're in hell. You know, like, shit like this happens. Like, oh, my God. That was three years ago on this day, man. Like, that's not long. That's really concerning, you know? Like, as a... Uh, as a, uh, a recent friend of mine, like, he has this meme. It's just, like, this skeleton thing. It's just, like, concerned. Like, you know? Uh, anyway. Even, oh yeah. Also, 2019 Nigerian government says it will reparate 600 people from South Africa after two people killed in a wave of xenophobic violence in Johannesburg. That's not good. Yeah. There we go. And yeah. 2019 poet John Milton's own copy of Shakespeare's first folio of 1623 has survived with his and a nation's according to scholar Jason Scott Warren in Philadelphia Library could be world's most important modern literally literal literary literary discovery wow that's amazing 1623 yeah. So his, his own copy of Shakespeare's first folio of 1623. That is amazing. Wow. Wow, that's... I mm -hmm. want to look at that, you know? I want to know where that is. Um, let's see here. Uh, well, 2019, uh, scientists reveal evidence of humans' earliest milk consumption at 6,000 years ago from the dental plaque of teeth of prehistoric, prehistoric farmers from Britain. Milk. It does a body good. You know? 6,000 years proof. Yep. Yep, and, you know, I don't even want to get into the politics of, like, the whole milk thing, you know, and, and like, you know, how Africans are uh, um, uh, lactose intolerant and whatnot. Uh, but, uh, like, what is it, 7% of U.S. citizens believe chocolate milk come from brown cows or something like that? Like, it's... Thanks. Yeah, stupid. So, but, man, we've been drinking milk for 6,000 years. You know, we've been eating bread for almost as long, you know, too, and we have all these gluten intolerances now, so that makes me really concerned about milk. Milk is amazing, and I love it. Anyway, one year later, in 2020, Donald Trump purposefully downplayed the pandemic and early... Okay, okay, that's... This is obviously, you know, so politically motivated the way that this is worded. Purposefully downplayed the pandemic in early 2020 to avoid panic, according to Bob Woodward's new book, Rage. Why, why is this even in a thing? This is such an obvious leftist, you know, like, article. Wow. Wow. You know, so so what do you want? You want to instill fear, huh? You know, is that what you want, Bob Woodward? You want to instill fear? You want to make everybody panic? You know, what's worse? Downplaying it? Making everybody calm? You know, rationally dealing with the situation? Or just having everybody lose their shit? What do you want, Bob Woodward, you piece of crap? 
And wow. Anyway, we went on up into 2021. Tom Brady became the first player in NFL history to start 300 regular season games as he guided Tampa Bay Buccaneers to an opening day 31-29 win at home to Dallas Cowboys. Tom Brady. Mm. Yeah, deflating footballs and all that stuff. So... Oh, wow. Uh, 2021, the one above what I just read. Uh, Sohan, it's your turn, I believe, again, if you want. Oh, um, oh okay. Oh, well, wow. Actually, uh, you know what? I'm going to jump in and, like, take back my offer. I'm going to go to 2020 here. Sorry. San Francisco Bay Area blanketed by dark orange skies and smoke due to California wildfires. Yeah. I remember all that. A lot of fires we yeah, had. Yeah, I heard about that, too. Also, 2021, well, 2021... 17 hospital patients died after heavy rainfall and flooding in Tola, central Mexico. Dang. It's horrible. Dang, dang, dang. And 2021, U.S. 2021 summer, the hottest on record with average 74 degrees Fahrenheit overtaken record set in 1936 during the Dust Bowl. Wow. That sounds like a cakewalk in the... California, 74. 74 is sweater weather here, dude. You know? Oh, and, and I'm not even saying. joking. Like, that, I sounds actually, like heaven to, that sounds like heaven to y'all. Yeah. 74. Yeah, well, 74, like, you know, 74 is actually cold for us. Because, like, you know, everybody was like, exactly. you know, everyone's always like, oh, California's so beautiful. It's always 70 degrees. No, it's not always 70 degrees. It's always 90 degrees. 70 degrees is when it's cold, you know, for us. So, I mean, granted, we do get down into, like, the 40s. We have dipped down into, like, you know, the 30s before. But on on average, yeah, 74 degrees is on the colder I side. I know what to believe. It is not so fucking cool. It is fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I wear uh, long sleeve shirts in 74, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, why don't you take this last one here, close out the uh, main body, then we'll do sure. a split, then we'll get into births and deaths. 2001, U.S. President Joe Byron announces widespread COVID vaccine mandates. Federal workers, contractors, and large employees have affected 100 million people. Oh, my God. Byron. It's just terrible. Terrible, terrible. Uh, before we do the split, though, you know, uh, asking the audience, were there any articles that grabbed your attention, you know, more than most? Like, uh, we've elaborated, you know, on all these things. We're actually, like, you know, approaching our second split here. Uh, but, like, yeah, like, you know, open up a dialogue. You know, s say something in the live chat. Say something in the comments section. We will talk back. I've said that multiple times. I try to make it a point to uh, be engaged with the community beyond that of the Discord server. So, anyway, let's do the split. Oh, we're not going to do back talk as in no sassy back talk. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we don't, we don't want sass. We don't want, you know, listen here, girlfriend, yeah. let me tell you about history, yeah. you know. We ain't going to do no sass. We yeah. don't sass. Hell no. Just, well, we talk back, though, but not sassy. Yeah, really. we will, we will discuss with you, you know, open up a dialogue, a, a conversation, essentially. Anyway, moving on into births. Starting us off in the year 214, we have Aurelian. He was a Roman emperor from 27, from 270 to 275. A five-year reign. That's really short. He was born in Serdusia, died in 2000, uh, died in 20, died in 275. Wow, I, I can't read a three-digit number. What is wrong with me? Um, then... We have William Bly in 1754. He was a British naval commander, mutinied against on HMS Bounty. He was born in Plymouth, probable, uh, England, and dying in 1817. Huh. Well, that's, uh... Yeah. Yeah, that's a really odd look, but yeah. No, anyway, it's not. Yeah. Well, it looks like someone that would get mutinied. Yeah. <laughs> someone who would get mutinied. He has a very mutinable face. It looks like fucking Mega Mine. A little bit, yeah. Uh, it's Alice's turn if she wants to read uh, in 1828 and uh, waiting for her to unmute if she wants, but uh, she's not, so I'm going to sew in. 1828. 1828, Leo Tolstrowski. Oh, yeah. Russian novelist Anna Karina 
War and Peace born in Osmina, Olena, Russia. Died in 1910. Ah. For a second I thought that said Leon Trotsky. So I was like, wait, oh, but, uh, no, it's Leo Tolsky. So, <laughs> but he is a Russian, so yeah. Okay. 1953, Fred Fourth, Australian cricket fast bowler, the demon, 18 test, 9 wickets at... 1841, born in Sydney, Australia. Died in 1926. Dang. Look at that haircut. He kind of looks like D-Day from, um, from Animal House a little bit. So. Okay. Well, like, yeah, yeah, have you ever seen Animal House? No. What? 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 Like... You of all people, like Animal House, you have not seen that. I, 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 I can't comprehend. Like, I heard of it. I heard of it. Well, now I know what we're gonna be playing this for, uh, tonight. Yeah, with John Belushi, right? Uh, yes, John Belushi. Oh yeah, John Belushi. John Belushi, the fat one. So, wow. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Okay. Remind me. Remind me. Uh, animal House Two Nights. Okay. Alright. Well, dang, I am, like, I am, like, flabberwabbered that you have not seen that. Like, you have seen so many movies. You are such, you know, you're so cultured with, you know, like, you know, movies and shows and everything. And Animal House is, like, Animal House is, like, borderline mandatory. I, I would, I would argue, you know, it is mandatory for someone you know, like you, who enjoys movies and everything. You haven't seen Animal House. I am, I am honestly I'm getting actually kind of offended that you haven't seen that. You know, like, wow. So. Anyway, oh, hey, 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 1890, Colonel Harlan Sanders, an American, the American founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken, born in Henryville, Indiana, dying in 1980. Well, well, well. There's a lot of things I can say, but I will off camera because, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Wow, Colonel Sanders, happy birthday to you. Did you know though, he didn't want a fried chicken, he wanted to grill it, but the company uh, outvoted him and they went to fried chicken instead. But yeah. Damn. Dang, Colonel Sanders, man. Born on this date in 1890. Jeez. And then we have Cliff Robinson, Clifford Cliff Robinson, born on the state in 1923. He was a U.S. actor, Char Charlie, and Spider-Man, and spokesman for AT&T, born in La Jolla, California, dying in 2011. I know where La Jolla is. La Jolla. Uh, I have, a, like, one of my aunts used to live there. So I saw that it's out in uh, Newport. So, uh, uh, Spider-Man, Cliff Robinson. Who was he in Spider-Man? Oh, wait, was he Uncle Ben? think so. Yeah, he kind of looks like him. Now, and like, you know, who's the old guy in Spider-Man? Not J. Jonah Jomison, whatever. You know? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's him. Uh, Uncle Ben? Spider-Man, let's see here. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, uh, Tobey Maguire's uh, Uncle Ben. Dang. Sohan, thine's turn. Okay, uh, let's see, 1941, Otis Redden, sing, American singer, songwriter, sitting on the dock of the bay, respect, born in Dawson, Georgia, died 1967. Man, dude, I love doo-wop songs, sitting on the dock of the bay, wasting time, it's a good song. 1954. I mean, 1952, Dave Stewart, British rock guitarist, songwriter, and producer. Here, Riffnicks, here I come again. Uh, morning, Sutherland, England. Yeah, here comes the rain again. And I think we're getting a bit of wind because my, uh, my cardboard blinds are appearing to be haunted. So. Anyway. We have Hugh Grant in 1960, an English actor, four weddings and a funeral, a funeral and Bridget, Bridget blah, 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 blah. four weddings and a funeral and Bridget Jones's diary, born in good old London, England. Yep. 
Adam Sandler! Adam Sandler shares a birthday with Colonel Sanders. That is, I'll be damned. That's cool. 1966, Adam Sandler, a U.S. actor and comedian. Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, Saturday Night Live. Uh, what else? Uh, Mr. Deeds. Um, you know, uh, there's a, a lot of other movies. Like, help me. Like, what are, um, what was that fire, that fireman one? He was with, uh, uh, the guy from, um, The King of Queens. And pretending to be gay firefighters. Happy for... Chuck and Larry. Yeah, that one. Thank you. Yeah, that was a good one. So, born in Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, you know. Man, I might have to actually have some more respect for Adam Sandler. Born in the same place my mother, well, my, my, well, the mother who, the mom who raised me when my grandmother was born. Yeah. Why can't I talk today? I have a serious case of muffin mouth. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I believe it's your turn again. Yeah, uh, all the way down to 1975, Michael Bubble, Canadian Grammy and Juno Award winning singer, Haven't Met You Yet, It's a Beautiful Day, an actor born in Burnaby, British Columbia. Yeah. Michael Bubble. <laughs> in 1980, Michelle Williams, American actress, Dawson's Creek, born in... How do you spell Montana? Huh. Montana. We have Luca Modric in 1985. She, was, she is a Croatian footballer, Real Madrid CF, and captain of Croatia. Born in Zadar, Croatia, Yugoslavia. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, let's see here. Um, and that's it for births and moving on to deaths. I'm just going to start us off with this one. In 546, we have Saint Ciaran of Clon Man Mac Clon Mac Noise, uh, Irish Bishop. All right. Ooh, you got a good one here. Saint, uh, 1087 William the Conqueror, the first Norman king of England, 1066 and 1087, and Duke of Normandy. 1035 and 1087. Dies about 59. Dang. Wait. And 1513, James IV, King of Scotland, 1488 and 1513, killed in Battle of Florida. At the age of 40. Dang, you know, like, like whatever happened to, you know, leaders who actually went in battle with the people, you know, they, they commanded, like, you know, if you're going to be a leader, be a leader. Lead, you know. What happened? Oh, uh, no. That? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, but at the same time, how can you sit there and expect people to die for you if you ain't going to die for them, you know? Like, it's just, it's just fair, you know? It's only fair. So... Anyway, doing a significant time jump into, oh my god, uh, 1976, Mao Zedong died on this date. A Chinese revolutionary and chairman of the Communist Party of China, 1949 through 76, died of a heart attack at 82. Mao all Zedong. I can say is, all I can say is Li Mao. Li Mao. Li Mao. Li Mao. It's John Zena! You know? Xi Jinping. John Zena. Yeah. That fucking picture. Yeah. Man. So, wow. This is going to be interesting next year. Because the Queen died yesterday, and then, you know, on this date, Mao Zedong. So that's going to spark a lot of uh, a lot of dialogue right there. As well as, like, yeah. uh, you know, he, he, on his, de his death day was the same as Colonel Sanders and Adam Sandler's. Well, that's weird. Colonel Sanders, Adam Sandler. Hmm. Wow. Uh, anyway, I think uh, it's your turn now. It's 1997. Ernie Grass Meredith, American actor Mr. Novak, the Penguin and Batman and Rocky, dies at 88. So I wonder if he was a voice actor for, like, you know, the uh, the Adam West. Or, like, no, I, well, I... I the Adam, Adam he West. was the Penguin in the Adam West Batman. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, Adam West had both a cartoon and a live action. So I was wondering if he was the voice actor of the cartoon penguin, but no, he's the he's the the actual actor who did the penguin in the TV show. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Don't forget to get some shark and repellent, you know. That's just, yep, and that's that. Look how close he is, Mickey. 
Mickey? Rocky. Mickey, Rocky, where? He's, he's Mickey, the uh, his trainer. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, wow. I, 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 I don't know where my, my brain was, but it wasn't here. Okay, Rocky. So he was a trainer in Rocky. Okay. He's Mickey. Okay. Oh, Mickey. I, I've never seen Rocky, so I, I don't know. Oh. So. Are you want to gasp at me? I guess I've seen Rocky. Hey, I gasp at you because you're the movie guy. I'm not. Like, me not seeing Rocky is far less shocking than you not seeing Animal House. What you're doing right now by not seeing Animal House is perpetuating a constant sin, you know, against yourself, man. You know? Like... I, I know I'm sitting, but like you know, you you have you have uh you have some standards to uphold, Mister. We got to get you to watch. We got we're gonna have a movie night tonight. We're gonna watch uh, Animal House. That's gonna happen, if I can find it at least. So, but anyway, you have a uh, one more here. 1997 Richie Ashburn American Baseball Hall of Fame infielder, six uh, Major League Baseball All Star, North oh, National League Ben. Champion, 1955 to 58, Philadelphia Phillies and sportscaster, Phillies TV, 1963 to 71, dies of a heart attack at 70. Dang. Yep. Uh, dude, like, I'm just, like, looking at it like he's, he's like, why am I holding so many bats? Like, he has a confused face. Like, you know, this is not how you play baseball. <laughs> like, like, why are you using three bats? Because they want to. <laughs> Anyway, 2001, we have Ahmed Shah Massad, and uh, was the Afghan. Well, we talked about this guy earlier. He got uh, assassinated, you know, that way. An Afghan political yep. and military leader who fought the Soviet Union and led the Northern Alliance against the Taliban. He was assassinated at the age of 48 in northeastern Afghanistan by Al Qaeda linked suicide bombers disguised as journalists. Dang, man. Dang. Not good. Um, it, is it my turn or your turn? I lost count. Uh, your turn, yeah, one more. Uh, 2003, we lost Edward Teller. He was a Hungarian a U.S. physicist, father of the hydrogen bomb. He worked in the Manhattan Project. Died at 95. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. Wow, part of the Manhattan Project. Father of the hydrogen bomb. Because, you know, there's atomic bombs, and then there's hydrogen bombs. You know? Yeah, I know. So, yeah, I know you know. I'm just letting the viewers know. Like, you know, there's a massive difference like yeah anyway uh well if you want to read any other there's no more highlighted ones so if you want one go for it and otherwise it's time to close okay uh, uh I don't re see anything yeah all right okay, well, well. That'll be it for the show today. Once again, check the underbar in the description for links that in, to anything you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition, which itself includes... On TV on Twitch. Uh, repeat that, you cut out at the very beginning. Zohan TV on Twitch. Yes. Go give him a watch. Uh, he is rather entertaining. Uh, anyway, for your dose of past events daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time. Of... Central, one, uh, Eastern. Yep. For all of you and all of us, I am, of course, A.O. Xander. I'm the troublemaker. Yes, he is a troublemaker. Although, uh, like, I'm, I'm catching up to your record, man. I got banned from, uh, Papa Stanimus' Discord yesterday. For really stupid reason. But, uh, and we have Alice over here who's muted, you know. You know, because she's busy at her work. Being a, a good little, you know, a busy, busy worker bee. Buzz, buzz. <laughs> and, of course, we had Scott popping in and off, dealing with uh, with stuff going on. Anyway, uh, until you catch us tomorrow, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. Until then, toodles. Let's go. Let's go, Brandon. Let's